Hey everyone, happy Wednesday. We're here for another episode of Healing Talks and today I'm going live with my friend Carla who is a raw vegan chef. We're gonna talk about the benefits of eating a raw vegan diet and all the amazing things that Carla has been up to since we last spoke last year on our first episode of Healing Talks and it seems like Carla just joined us. So welcome Carla. I'm gonna invite her in and we're gonna get to talk to her in just a moment. Hey, Carla. Hello, how are you? I'm doing amazing. I was just celebrating you and, and all the uh, incredible things that you do. And I'm really excited for this episode so we can talk about everything you've been up to since we last spoke last year on, on Healing Talks. I can't yeah, believe it. thank you for having me again. Yeah, so absolutely. <laughs> it's a pleasure. We're just letting some people join in. Welcome everyone who's joined us so far. We've got... Juan, Michelle, Alex, the Cacao King has joined us. Grand. Hi. Yeah. yeah. Welcome, everyone. So happy to have all of you here. Speaking of cacao, I was just at a, a men's retreat, the Pursuit of Kings. We had our first retreat this past weekend at the Everglades. And our friend Jeff from Cacao Soul gave us a big batch of cacao from Nicaragua. Yeah, if you, you know, you've had cacao, it's incredible. He makes and amazing so, cacao. So happy to support our local business entrepreneurs like Jeff and like yourself here, and especially the, the people who are bringing healthy food and conscious food, awareness to food, to the community. And it was amazing. We didn't have any coffee. We were on, a, on an island off the west coast of Florida, no coffee. So that was really our mm -hmm. our for the week and we needed it because it was long days out in the sun all day and I was, I was gifted with the opportunity to serve out for the guys and they loved it so thank oh, you Jeff awesome. Jeff wherever you are thank you so much <laughs> for stepping up you know and, and thank you Carla for stepping up believing in your dream <laughs> you weren't always a chef you weren't always a vegan but nope. because of life and because of your healing journey you decided to go on this path and and now we get to benefit from all the beautiful things that, you, that you're passionate about. So thank you so much. We appreciate you. And I know that I'm speaking for a lot of people when I say that. So, um, that means a lot. And that means a lot because um, I feel like your, like an entrepreneurial journey is not always rainbows and butterflies. <laughs> and it's, a really, it's really powerful to be appreciated for your work. Because regardless of if you have constant clients buying your product, it's really nice to have that feedback and to have people really appreciate what you do because not everybody takes the time and the energy to actually let you know how they feel about your product. And we are here on this side really wondering, like, I, I'm giving my best. I hope that my client is receiving it that way. But, you know, everybody's different and everybody uh, works differently. So you never know. So it's, it means a lot. I, I appreciate that because I do this for people and that's what lights me up. So every time I get like a nice feedback or a message, this morning I woke up and there was a video of somebody eating my Twix bars and I was just so excited. Like it makes me feel so alive and I'm like, okay, that's why I do what I do. <laughs> oh my gosh. So that was one of the things that I wanted to talk about on today's Healing Talk is how you've grown since we last spoke. And that's another thing that I love about these follow-up healing talks. I did one with my friend Sonia, and she's also grown. She's also expanded her, her offerings. She now does IK in addition to her human design offerings. And I spoke yesterday briefly over the phone, and you told me that you're making delicious bars now. Can you, can you tell us first, for the people who don't know you, how you got started on this journey of cooking raw vegan food or not cooking but making raw vegan food <laughs> um, sure. and what what you're up to now for the people who already do know you and how you've expanded from within the last sure so i got started in 2008 and my main motivation was my mom um i was born and raised in a restaurant by a nutritionist mother so i always ate kind of healthy 
But in 2004, when we moved from Brazil to the States, my mom wasn't doing very well. And she was going through a deep state of depression. And it was very hard to be in that space. Um, I was 16, 17 at the time. It, it wasn't a, you know, a fun time. And eventually in 2006, my mom heard about raw foods. She went on a lecture and somebody was talking about how eating clean really affects how you feel and your mental state. And it's funny, not funny, but it's interesting that in such a short period of time, there's so much research, but we're still in the beginning stages of the mind in uh, the gut and brain connection, right? So back then, nobody was talking about that, how your gut influences how you feel. Um, so my mom went on a healing journey and she felt so much better. And then she got really inspired to continue to cleanse and just eat healthier. So she started eating raw foods. And at the time I was living in California, she came to visit and she made, she was, all she talked about was raw foods. And I'm like, well, I have no idea what you're talking about. And she made some dishes and I really fell in love with it because they were so colorful. They were so vibrant. They were so tasty and also so simple. So it was so intriguing to me that simple ingredients could create amazing food. And I realized that a lot of my meals were already raw. I always ate fruits for breakfast and I already ate pretty clean in general, but I definitely overate dairy and um, gluten and sugar and processed foods. So I decided to go on a journey myself and say, oh, let me see how I feel for seven days. And my initial motivation was to lose weight. I was 20 years old at the time. This was 2008. And I just decided to try it out. And I was so in awe of how I felt. It was so amazing. I had so much energy. I just felt so good. My body was just, my digestion was functioning so good. And it made me realize that I thought this was normal. And then I ate raw foods and I felt this way. And I'm like, whoa, I don't want to go back here. I want this all the time. So that was my motivation to just continue learning and reading. And my mom gifted me a whole bunch of raw vegan uh, cookbooks. And I just started just reading the story of, the, of all the authors and seeing what they had to say because not one single person talked about only food in the gourmet aspect of, of food, of raw foods. Everybody connected it to a deeper, deeper aspect of their life. You know, they either had some kind of health issues that they were able to improve or they were really concerned about the animals or they really cared about the environment. So that started to really plant seeds in my mind and see the world so differently. So I started really just perceiving food differently. And that's when I got started in my journey back in 2008. And yeah. eventually I just, you know, stumbled upon making food for people. People started asking and I never considered myself a chef at the time. <laughs> I was raised at a restaurant. I didn't need to eat or to make food. I just ate whatever was served for me. And I guess I was blessed with gourmet food every day for years. And I felt really inspired. And then I realized that my knowledge, I was taking my own knowledge for granted you know, that people didn't know how to make almond milk, for example, which was something so simple that I, I think I've never really bought almond milk ever. And the first time I found out you could buy almond milk was probably like three years ago. And I'm like, Oh, what? You can find almond milk in cartons? That's strange. So it's just realizing, you know, how, um, how that knowledge is not mainstream. And it isn't yet. It's growing and it's grown so much, which makes me so happy. Uh, just like you said. Hey, Carla, you there? <laughs> yes, I wasn't sure my phone was doing something weird. Okay, um, so you asked me about my business now. So currently I offer um, weekly meal delivery plans for people. And as of last year, I started making these raw vegan Twix bars. 
and I got into a couple of local stores. So I currently sell them at, in Miami at Love Life Cafe, which is, I think, the most popular place out of the three. Um, Natura Eatery, which is not a vegan place, but they have vegan option. It's a really cute um, place with acai bowls and smoothies. And at the Plantisserie, which is also a vegan spot. So that has been really exciting to just uh, create healthy treats. I enjoy making desserts. <laughs> that's that's awesome. I, I want to just, you said so much, and I want to I want to kind of touch on a little bit because I, I can resonate with your story. Um, I I grew up in a banquet hall. When I was a young kid, my aunt and uncle, they ran a banquet hall, and the food was, you know, chicken, you know, typical, like, banquet hall food, and Anyways, long story short, I I never I never like really took it upon myself until recently. Actually, back in 20, 2020, I started cooking for myself because I started noticing that I was always eating out. I was gaining a lot of weight. The gym, and I I started down this self love path, which I've been on mm -hmm. for the last five years. And for me, cooking is kind of self love. It's a it's a self love practice, and I. That I was recently at, I was teaching yoga, I was teaching breath work, and I was also cooking for the guys in addition to preparing the chow. And it was interesting because Jeff and Jackson, who put the the retreat on, they asked me, "Well, Lewis, we know that you're going to be teaching yoga, we know that you're going to be facilitating breath work, but what else are you willing to offer to the men of this retreat?" And I, I, I would love to be the cook, I can be the chef. And That's awesome. How much I love it. That's how much I love their food for myself, for my friends. For me, it's such an act of love do that for someone else and to do that for myself as well and i love tasting the food and i by the way i never about you but i never measure out, i never measure out the ingredients <laughs> i have cups and all that but i don't even use them i i go by feel i taste it and uh, yeah it's 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 a lovely experience to do that for someone else to do that for myself as well yeah um, i agree with you such a form of love and i I think I felt that way my whole life and I just recently realized it because I'm an only child so you might say I'm a little bit spoiled but my mom always made me not always but a lot she made me breakfast in bed and it's funny because when I got older she admitted that she only did that because it was easier to control what I was eating <laughs> So my mom always, she was always very strict with me eating my fruits and vegetables and just limiting certain things. I couldn't eat sugar as a kid, which I'm very grateful that she was so strict with my diet. But, you know, I, I always received that as such a form of love that she would bring me breakfast in bed. It was so special to just wake up with that treat. So for me, that was, it was precious. And, and I agree for me, like making food for people is a form of love for sure. Now, for me, it was the opposite. It was the other way around. I grew up in a house where the Twinkies, hair, soda, so the, the food, food wasn't the healthiest. And so I, I grew up, when I, when I got into, I started getting into sports. I got myself into wrestling. And that was the first time that I had to actually watch my weight. I was, mm -hmm. I was eating out of weight class. So I actually got into dieting, but I did it very tough. Way. It wasn't a very healthy way of dieting where I was starving myself, I was depleting myself of calories, and, and then whenever I I would just pig out. So I would eat whatever was at home, which was pasta, a lot of processed foods. And so uh, I was always yo-yoing in my weight. And so that's why I took it upon myself in 2020 to just stop going out to eat so much and go out and get ingredients and start preparing food on my own. And, and I love what you said about Taking the almond milk, that might be to someone like for me, before I started eating friends like you, that seemed like it was going to be so hard. And it's actually a really simple problem yeah. that you can buy in order to help you make the almond milk. And so a lot of this stuff seems on the outside, seems to be difficult cooking and preparing these dishes, but simple. And there's a lot of resources out there. Now, what I want to know is when is the Raw Chef Carla app coming out so we can get the ingredients to make your make your Twix bar, make your cake. <laughs> your right? I need to get that going. I'm getting that. 
I do have some online courses though. I have a dessert oh, yeah? online course um, that it's do it at your own pace. And it's just things that I have been creating over the years. It hasn't been like my main focus because I just, I, I have so much, so many hands on things that I do, but I do have a few online courses that have some simple recipes. Um, I have a seven day detox and I have a raw food basics. And those really help people get started because I put myself on the students shoes and how I felt when I got started. Um, I have a lot of cookbooks and some of them were so complicated and because I never, I had never really been much in the kitchen, I needed a full on break down of everything. So when you present me a, a dish that takes three days to make, I'm like, no, I, that's so much time. No, I can't. So really breaking down recipes into an easy way. They can still be delicious, they can still be gourmet, but really making something easy, that's what had, has worked for me personally in my journey. So I recently uh, did some classes with a student, which I also offer. I offer private classes. Um, I absolutely love teaching, just for the record. I used to teach at Plant Miami before the pandemic hit, and we had classes, um, twice a week and it was amazing because it was just three hour classes people would come and have hands-on uh, experience and just showing them how to make simple and delicious dishes so my I get, I get feedback from my students all the time it's like wow you can really break it down and make it simple because I have this fear of raw foods I have this idea that raw foods take so long and I think cooking in general, yeah, you need to put a little bit more effort. It's not just like going to a restaurant and everything's ready for you and you don't need to wash the dishes or chop anything. But if you can, if you can see that as a form of self-love and if you can change your um, relationship with food and dieting altogether, it's so powerful. Because I can relate with you. I used to always be like dieting and binging I always had a sweet tooth and in my mom's restaurant she would make amazing desserts and I couldn't just eat one I would eat like five desserts and then I would feel awful about that and I said oh now I can't eat desserts for two weeks and I would just deprive myself and obviously we know that now I know that sugar is highly addictive so I don't really consume processed sugars and when I make when I transitioned to raw foods I was so excited that I could make healthy desserts that were just way cleaner and now I don't feel guilty about them but also my relationship with food has changed so much that I don't feel the need to have desserts every day and if I do have desserts I know when, when I, I'm satisfied I don't need to indulge I don't overeat anymore I don't feel sick from eating and it's so beautiful because I realize that I, I'm sure I'm not the only one that used to do that and I see that with other people. Sometimes I go home and I see my dad, you know, that mentality that you can't leave food on the plate because there are people starving in somewhere else. And in my mind now, it's like, well, I understand, but you overeating and feeling sick is not going to help those people. It's not gonna do any good. So how else can you help them? And I always tell him, your body is not a trash can. You can give your food back to nature you know, you can just compost it. It's going to go back to nature. You don't need to feel guilty about not eating the food. It's okay. But it, this all has been a process for me. You know, it's easy to say it now, but it took me really years to be able to embrace it and to feel this way. Yeah. At the time when I was doing, cutting weight for my, my wrestling matches, I didn't know it, but I was actually fasting. And mm. I was just like unhealthy way where I, driving myself of food for a couple of days, sometimes two days, and then I would go and I would, I would wrestle. And then after the, the matches were done, I would just go and stock up on a bunch of food. And it was usually a lot of food and processed foods. And so I was, like I said earlier, always yo-yoing and diet. Now, I did go back to fasting in 20, something that I do every single week. In fact, uh, at the men's retreat, it's ironic that I was the food for the guys, but I was fasting the entire time. That's I amazing. Ate a, I didn't eat a single thing for three days on that island. I only That's ate good. once I got off. Yeah. So so I still fast this day, and now what I do is after I'm done, I 
like, like fruit, some juice, to get my, my, my system working again. And I love the fact that you do a detox program because it wasn't until I started getting into Ayurvedic, which is the, the medical yoga, and into, into healthy eating that I realized like there is a process to this. This isn't just stop eating food and then once you're done for a certain period, um, pig out and eat a bunch of food. Mm -hmm. So I love the fact that people learn how to detox and wean themselves off of food, but then also introduce foods back into their system. So can you tell us a little bit about that detox program? Because that sounds incredible. I'd love to sure. know more about it. So, I mean, in general, raw foods are detoxifying, period, because we're comparing to how people are eating. So when you're not cooking food, you are giving yourself all the enzymes that the food has, which will help you digest and break that food down. Um, your body, you're not like receiving as many toxins because there's a lot of toxins that are also created when you cook certain foods, um, especially animal products and dairy. And we know that the way that they are just raised nowadays and so many antibiotics and hormones, all of that is highly toxic for us. So if we're consuming that on a daily basis, your body's toxic. And of course, all the other things, there are other aspects of it as well, like water and the air. But if we're just talking about food, um, the majority of people eat, a, they eat a lot of toxins on a daily basis. And once you go into fruits and vegetables, your body is just assimilating all of those nutrients and it allows your body to detoxify and cleanse in a milder way. So I feel like eating raw foods is, um, it's not as deep as fasting, but it's a, a milder way for people to get into it because fasting can be very scary. And depending on where you are physically, it can be too much. So not everybody can handle it. For example, when I do my detox programs, I don't recommend caffeine. And most people, day three, I get that call, I get the text message, I feel horrible, I have a headache, and I'm like, I know, it's expected, your body is detoxifying, and it's normal. Just get through today, drink a lot of water, stay hydrated, maybe go for a walk, and um, get, your, get sweating a little bit, go to a sauna, get a massage, and really rest, allow your body to rest, and you will feel better tomorrow. And then a couple of days after, they're like, oh my gosh, you were right. I feel so much better. And so it, it takes time, but it's done in a gentle way. Now, if that person went all in with juice fasting or even water fasting, it would happen way too quickly and they would feel grumpy and they would feel crappy and that would not be a good thing because then now they're they associated with that, right? Um, but when you get back into eating, your body needs to if you go a long time, and this is mainly for ex extended fasts. So I say extended like seven days, for example. If you are seven days without eating, your metabolism is gonna slow down, your digestion is going to slow down, and your body's gonna focus on really cleansing. So when you get back into eating, you need to ease yourself because otherwise your stomach's gonna hurt and you're not gonna feel good. So eating high water content foods is, very important and also high fiber so when I fast I, I like to start with eating like oranges or maybe watermelon because it makes you chew and then you chew very well because that's where your digestion starts you're sending the signal to your brain to release all of the enzymes to start to start your digestion so if you chew very well your body's going to start to wake up basically your digestive system is asleep and then you're going to be breaking down that food and then you're going to feel better. And I've done multiple fasts, usually ju juice, although a few, in 2020 I was doing a lot of water fasting, but just 24 to 72 hours. Um, but they're amazing, even if you fast once a week. You know, it's so powerful for your body to just give that break because in general we overeat. So easing yourself into it is extremely important you don't want to shock your system and then feel crappy again so people need to understand that and it's hard because personally i don't know how you feel but i feel like once you start eating you wake up a monster inside you that was asleep you're like oh i get to eat again and all of a sudden you're super hungry you're like oh my god this is hard <laughs> 
So I, I, I've been um, I've been doing a lot of plant medicine ceremonies this year. It feels like every weekend I'm doing a plant medicine ceremony, which is amazing. And that's also very healing. And I've had other people come on here and talk about the benefits of plant medicine. I won't get into that today, but um, I remember at my um, San Pedro ceremony, I had gone two days without any water or any food because okay. I really was there was some healing that I needed to do there that I wanted to do in, in my heart area and. I really took the medicine back. I, I respect all the plant medicines, ayahuasca, mm -hmm. everything I respect. So I, I ceremonies, seriously, I have a big intention every time I go into them. And I remember towards the end of the night, three a.m., uh, we were getting ready to close out the ceremony and someone gave me uh, a strawberry. And, I, and just instinctively, I, I, I smelled the strawberry I took a little bite of the strawberry. I chewed it. I love what you said about chewing your food, taking your time to sit with the food, because that does jumpstart the digestion process. And um, Buddhists, actually, they they eat their food, I don't know how many times before they actually swallow. So they're very mindful of how they eat. And that's part of mindfulness and yoga. And all of this can be combined into everything. Mm -hmm. And how you cook your food, how you smell your food. So, And that could be tantra. Oh, that could be a tantric experience. You can eat food. Um, so I love that you said that about taking time, chewing the food, letting your body um, really assimilate to the food and, and get into an experience rather than like something that you're doing while you're doing other things. And uh, this week I, I, I have this course called the Soul Tribe. It's a 10-week course and we go over the 10 principles of yoga. And one of them is um, brahmacharya or the, the sacred path. And in this week, we're talking about how everything is sacred. Everything is sacred. It's just that we forget about that because we, we, we live in such a place of society that eating food becomes something that we do, that we just do while we're texting or watching a movie. Mm -hmm. um, uh, everything can be sacred. So the fact that you're take your time chewing the food, um, take the time to pick out your ingredients, know yeah. where your food is coming from, make your own food. Yeah. I love I love that. I love that Being about present. you. You we have to be present with our food, and and I'm guilty of that too. Especially when I'm cooking, if if I have to taste the food, I realize that it really bothers my my stomach because I'm tasting different things, and maybe I'm in the kitchen for six hours and I haven't sat down to have a meal, but I tasted different things as I was prepping food for clients, and then I find myself not hungry, for example. So I don't. And I can compare that to snacking, right? How many people snack and not really take time to sit down and have a meal? And just noticing how you feel. I notice when I go um, when I go to Brazil and I'm just you know at my parents' house and I don't have to cook for clients and I'm just living as a normal human, you know, and just having three meals a day or maybe a snack in the afternoon. It, my relationship with food is so different and I can appreciate that so much. I was like, wow, it's, I can sit and have a meal and I can feel hungry again. And then just paying attention to how my body reacts to it because it, it ties down to body awareness as well. And most of us, we just, we're on autopilot. So I would, I think it's so important to sit down with your meals and really make that sacred and, and, and be present because you're going to start to, to taste things different too. And that was a huge difference for me when I changed my diet to raw foods. I guess our taste buds are so tainted by all the chemicals that are put in food. Like processed foods are, they're not real foods. It's Franken foods. It's scary. And I can now taste it. Like if I taste something that's not natural, it doesn't come from nature. I taste chemicals. It's so crazy. I taste bitter. I, I can't like, I, I can no longer really eat sugar. It, it just, your body changes so much. And I think it's so, even though some people perceive that as a way of removing yourself from society, you know, cause it's, it can be difficult when you have relationships and then you're just changing on your own and you don't have that support because we are social beings. Um, I feel like it's, we, we need to, be more present and pay more attention to food and do this for us and, and really like care about our own bodies and our health and the environment and everything really because it changes the relationship and then you can influence other people around you as well 
but I notice how addicted people are to food. And I see that, you know, with, with so, so many people around. Can I answer this question? Hey, I was just going to say, let's answer that question because um, Antigo's been asking about juicing. About juicing. Yeah. I love this question. I, congrats on buying a juicer. I'm obsessed with juicing. Um, I've been trying something new lately, not new, but I've been juicing a lot. So I drink about 32 ounces of green juice every day and I love it. I used to drink only like maybe 16 ounces or a little bit. I absolutely love juicing. I think it's an amazing way to get more nutrients because when it comes to a plant-based diet, you, if you're eating clean whole foods, you end up needing to eat a lot of bulk to get all the calories and all the nutrients that you need. And nobody has time to chew on five pounds of kale. But if you juice five pounds of kale, you may get 16 ounces and you will feel amazing. You know, you're consuming all of that, but you're just removing the fiber and you don't have to really break down. Your body doesn't have to break down all of that. It's assimilating the nutrients within minutes. So for me, when I juice, I immediately feel so alive. It's like my body wakes up when I, when I drink my juice. So yes, a juicer is an amazing way to start uh, incorporating more plants into your diet because some people are very picky also with, um, with texture. So perhaps juicing, it's easy. And then you can add some fruits in there. You can make your juice sweet. You can tweak. Um, I recommend juicing more greens and, or celery and cucumber and vegetables than fruits because when you're removing the fiber, there's a lot of sugar. It's concentrated sugar. But, I mean, it's still good for you. Don't, I, don't, I don't want people to be scared of fruits because it's too much sugar. It's like, no. Like, really pay attention to everything else that you're eating. And then fruits are amazing. Don't be afraid of fruits because of the sugar content. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that if you are juicing too much fruits, then you're removing the fiber and it's just a bomb of sugar right away. So start slow. Uh, you don't need to juice a whole pineapple, but you can juice a quarter of a pineapple and drink it. Um, you know, or if you, I would recommend eating an orange instead of juicing an orange, but don't be afraid to juice an orange if that's what it takes for you to also drink the celery, the kale, and the other amazing things that you're trying to juice. There's, there's a, I mean, thank you for answering that question. Antigua is very grateful and thank you for asking the question, Antigua. And we're so happy that you bought a juicer. I remember I got my first juicer back in 2018 and I, I, I bought two because I broke the first one. That's how much I was using it every single day. Um, mm -hmm. No longer juice, actually. It's funny. I just kind of, I, you know, I, I want to get to this topic. I have another question that I want to ask you, and I want to, I want to get to the topic of intuitive eating, which is what I've been doing lately. And first, before we do that, I want to talk about, you said Franken foods, how yeah. the foods you have in the market are so processed these days. And the, I went through some stuff at the beginning of the year where I, I'm in, you know, full transparency, I was in a of depression and I did not have the energy nor the desire to cook. I just was really healing my heart and I, I was going out to, to eat. And I, I remember going to Publix quite a bit and getting there at Publix. And there's this one salad that I love. It's got strawberries in it. It's got um, greens these little um, nuts, these, these like almond nuts. And, and then it's got uh, this dressing in it. It's a vinaigrette dressing. And one day I was, I was eating it and I was like, man, why do I love this so much? And I looked at the ingredients of the vinaigrette dressing and it was brown sugar and vinaigrette. And then the little, the, the almonds are covered in sugar. So I'm basically <laughs> eating a salad. So it's, it's how they pump the, the healthy foods what they try to sell you as healthy foods with all the sugars and all these things that aren't good for you. How prevalent is that right now in our society? And, and again, that's, an, I think, another reason why it's so important to buy your own ingredients. The fresher, the better. The local, the more local, the better. And stuff uh, at home on your own. How I love that question because I realized that we are not taught to read labels. And that's one of the first things that I that I start with my clients, read your labels. 
Um, because for example, you can go buy almond butter and think that you're buying a great brand of almond butter, but when you actually read what's in it, it's sugar and oil and almonds. You can make almond butter with only almonds. I make my own almond butter sometimes and it's only almonds. You put it in the food processor and you let it process for about 15, 20 minutes and it's going to turn into butter. That's it. You have to process it enough to release the oils and become that pasty texture. But when you go to the store, they add all these other things because it makes it sweet and it makes it more appealing to people. And then you want it again. And we have our microbiome, right? Which is the colony of bacteria that lives in our gut. And the bad bacteria feeds off of sugar. And it's really important to create this healthy balance between the good and the bad bacteria. But when you're constantly feeding the bad bacteria and you're eating processed foods, your good bacteria is deprived of nutrients. Your bacteria, the good bacteria, feeds off of fiber from fruits and vegetables, not a fiber powder that you buy that your doctor gives you because you're constipated. No, like fruits and vegetables have a lot of fiber. If you just eat fruits and vegetables, you're going to be feeding your good bacteria. And then you're going to create a healthy environment in your gut. And when you create that healthy environment in your gut, you are also going to feel better because of your gut and brain connection. So I always tell people to pay attention to that, what they're eating when they are depressed. Because I I like that you touched on that topic because when you're not feeling good, you don't want to cook. But that's when you should be cooking the most because by cooking, you're going to feel better. (laughs) You know, by, by eating healthy foods, you're going to feel better. So really paying attention to that and making an effort. It's just like exercise, right? Um, I don't know you, but I feel so much better when I exercise and I make it a non-negotiable. I work out first thing in the morning. I wake up, I meditate, I drink my lemon water and I work out because I notice how my day is different when I work out. So if I'm not feeling good, I'm like, oh, I'm going to skip my workout. It's like, no, that day is just going to continue to drag. But if I make that effort and go work out, I feel so much better and so much more energized. So I feel that it's the same with food. And I get you because it's not always easy. Even for me, I slack sometimes on my juicing. Juicing can be can be tough, but it's getting in the habit, you know, and choosing what things are important for you. Um, and then you can create so much more from that more elevated state. Because the reality is that if you're not feeling good, everything else around you is not going to do well. And I say this a lot to friends who have, um, who have kids. Oh, I don't have time to take care of myself. I take care of my kids. And I always tell them, but if you don't exist, it's going to be way harder for your kids. So take care of yourself first. It's not being selfish. You can't pour from an empty cup. Really take care of yourself. And then from there, you're going to see how everything else is going to fall into place. So I, this is usually my focus. It's like feeling good. You know, what things can I do for myself to feel good in order for everything else to fall into place? Because even in my business, when I am energized and my, when I'm feeling good and I'm excited, I get clients. It just comes. It comes to me. I get people asking for classes and people buying this and that, and it's amazing. But when I'm dragging and I'm not feeling good, they go away. And it's incredible. Like, it's just energy. It, people feel it. I want to just say thank you because you gave me a huge gift right now without even knowing it. <laughs> As you were talking about gut-brain relationship and how during this time that I was going through a bit of a depression, I was my body, my subconscious mind, or maybe even my inner child was seeking this sugary food. Though mm-hmm. on the outside, to be healthy, I was really, uh, what I was doing, I was coping with my emotions, like I had done when I was a little kid. Because like I said earlier, in my house, we had sweets and treats. And as a little kid, when I was sad or whenever I felt anxious, I remember going to the cabinets and I remember going and eating ice cream, just it's comfort food. You know, it feels good for us, that that little bit of sugar every now and then. And I love what you said about when you do feel depressed, when you do feel sad, that's the the time to really be more aware of what you're eating and what you're doing. Because if you're not, then you can just revert back to 
old patterns of when you were a little kid and when you felt sad. And I don't know about you, but you know, we, we both come from Latin cultures and Cuban food is very similar to Brazilian food. And that was a very big surprise for me when I first, I went to the, my first ever Brazilian restaurant back in 2017. And I got invited by a friend of mine and I thought, oh my gosh, Louis, don't, don't say anything. If they come out with like snails or, you know, like anything weird, I didn't know what you guys ate. You know, I was like, just be open-minded, you know? And when the food came out, it was feijoada, which is, you know, yeah. rice, beans and pork and yuca. And you guys just call it by something differently, but it's basically the same thing that we Cubans mm -hmm. eat. So I was like, oh man, this is my jam. You know, you guys get down just like we do. So we, in our culture, especially like the Latin people that are watching, our food is very sweet. It's very, um, it's very um, oily. So be very mindful of when you do feel sad or depressed or you're not doing your best because you might just revert back to those old ways, you know, and, and try to feel like that comfort that you did when you were young. I, I'll never forget seeing my uncle in the kitchen, you know, um, making, uh, what is this? It's, it's like cheese with um, guava paste. And like he would get the cheese, he would make a slice and then the guava paste and like, he would like make a guava and cheese paste sandwich and like just eat that. Like that was his dessert. And yep. the, that guava paste has so much sugar in it and the cheese is not any better. So yep. uh, we, we as, as Latinos, and I, I don't know about anyone else, but like for sure I know that we have to be very mindful of what we eat because I mean, I don't know about you, but my grandmother, diabetes, like most of my family has diabetes. Like it's in our family, like, um, um, heart attacks. My, my father passed away from heart attack. My grandmother got cancer. So we have to be very careful because it's, it's, we're, we're predisposed to a lot of these diseases that happen because we're not mindful of how we're eating. For sure. Yeah, my grandmother uh, passed of cancer as well. And I today have obviously every time I go to the OBGYN, they ask about family history and they try to scare you from that. And I'm like, no, I refuse to believe that genetics will play a role in that because I believe in epigenetics. I believe that your environment and what you are doing to your body plays a bigger role in in that. So I know that my grandmother ate a lot of a lot of sugar. She used to, they had a property uh, in the country, so she would preserve all the fruits with sugar and always making jams and sweets and. I refuse to believe that that's my path as well. And I just don't associate, associate with that. Um, but I hear you. It's, I see it on the other side of my family too. You know, like recently my aunts and uncles were here visiting and we were having this conversation and they have such a hard time letting go. And they create all of these excuses of why they can't eat healthier. And even though they do eat their fruits and their vegetables, they still eat a lot of junk food and they still have unhealthy habits. And there's always the excuse like, oh, but we, we, we cater to so many people. We always have people at home and we go out so much. We're so social. We can't eat healthier. And so I, I see how emotionally attached we are to food. And I just find it throughout the years of working on myself, like how else can you comfort yourself? What other things that are healthier can you comfort yourself with? Because just eating a bag of M&Ms, it's really not going to make you feel loved. The M&Ms are not loving you. You know, what else do you, what else do you need? Can you call a friend? Can you go to a yoga class? Can you go for a walk on the beach and get some fresh air and sunshine and put your feet in the ocean? It's so healing. What other practices can you do that will actually make you feel better? Right on. Right on. And I, and I want to answer a question. This is such a great conversation, by the way, Carla. It's always an awesome time when, when I have you here on Healing Talks. You're such an <laughs> healer, you're such a friend, a well we can keep this going for another hour and still have stuff to talk about. And I, and I also want to answer Gloria's question. She says, what brand or type of juicer do you recommend? So um, I have, I currently have a Huron juicer. I don't love it. It's good, but I don't love it. I've always had an Omega juicer, which is also good, but I don't love it. <laughs> Maybe I'm too picky. <laughs> I also make a lot of juice. So I don't know, like those are, I recommend a cold press juice. So not um, a centrifugal, it's a, what's slipping my mind, it will come to me. But you want to cold press your juice. 
Yes, I was going to say that recently my friend told me about the amazing Nama Juicer, the J2, and I really want to invest on that one. So it's about $500, which can be a hefty investment for a lot of people. But as far as I know, you can put a lot of things semi whole. You don't need to cut them smaller and the juicer will just do its work while you do other things. And with, I feel like the Omega juicer is the most affordable one for beginners. If you're really just getting into juicing, the Omega is great for like celery, for example, and celery is such a powerful juice. Um, and if you're just making a little bit of juice, the Omega is good and it's only a couple hundred dollars. So if you don't want to go all the way to the $500 juicer, but it is an investment in your health. You're not buying an appliance, you're buying your health. And equipping your kitchen is really going to get you going. It is going to get you in the kitchen because it's going to make your life easier. So I do have a Blendtec, which is a $500 blender. I love my blender. I use it a million times a day. I could not live without it. I go to Brazil and I get frustrated with my dad's Nutribullet, which works wonders <laughs> for the little amount of smoothie that he makes. But when I make a 64 ounce smoothie versus the 16 ounce that he makes, then I get frustrated. So I noticed the difference, you know, and having the right equipment will make your food taste better. It will make it more efficient. So you're going to be saving time and you're not going to be disappointed with what you're creating. So it's a huge investment in your, in your health. Yeah, I think that that's, that's, uh, that's the thing that I've, I've seen with a lot of people who are raw is that there, there are some things, some gizmos, some appliances that you're going to need to invest in. And it's initially going to be a little bit costly. But what I've noticed is with the ones that I do have, they last you forever. Forever. You probably never have to get a lifetime warranty on them. Yeah, my, my Blendtec, I just got a new one, and, but I, my old one is still going. And I have to say it's, it's easily 10 years old. And most of these appliances have amazing warranties. So my Blendtec has had issues in the past. I send it in. The customer service is amazing. They get it back to you. It's a seven-year warranty. They don't even charge you anything to replace any parts. It's amazing. Same with the food processor. Um, so yeah, the investment can be a little bit high, but you know, even with cooking, for example, if you want to buy a good cooking range, sometimes they're $5,000 with $5,000, you can equip a whole raw vegan kitchen and have amazing appliances. Yeah. And then once you go raw vegan, it's not really that expensive. Correct. Initially, it's going to cost you a little bit. It is going to take some investment, but I love what you said. Your health, wealth, your, yeah. your investment. In your health at the end of the day yeah and even if you're not raw like having a good blender makes a huge difference because i'm sure anybody likes smoothies and if you use just a regular blender you're gonna be chewing on that spinach you're not it's not gonna be smooth there's nothing smooth about it i call them chunkies when i go home i'm like dad this is not a smoothie this is a chunky <laughs> Carla, I, you know, I love you so much and I see <laughs> so much with everything that you're up to all the, and I'm going to give you the next five to six minutes to just riff on like all the things that you're doing right now with your students, with your clients, all the things that you're, and before we do that, I want to challenge you. Okay. I'm going to give you a challenge because we usually talk, we, we have a healing talk every single year and God willing, you know, both around next year, I yeah. want us to have fun. <laughs> and next year, you know what I want to challenge you to think about for this year? Please tell me. A, a cookbook, a, Car a Carla, the Raw Vegan Chef Carla cookbook or the Raw Vegan Chef Carla app. I love that. Yes. It's, 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 People have been asking for years when the cookbook, I, I don't have it on me, but I have a binder this thick with all of the recipes that I constantly make for my clients. So I have enough materials to create a, a, a book for sure. Um, I would love, I love that challenge. Challenge accepted. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. We, we, I mean, I just love because, you know, and I'll, I have a, I have a uh, wide collection of books here, and I only love certain books because of the way that the author conveys the information. I love the way they break things down. You, you tell me exactly what I need to know. 
and you give it away, you do information that's digestible, no, no pun intended. So I, I think the community would really appreciate it if you created a cookbook or an app, something that we can have on our phone. So then I can start making some of your treats at home here in my own kitchen. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that support. To, also, think about it. You won't have to take on so much because I know right now you're, you're pretty much a one person team, right? Yeah, I have an assistant and I have a driver um, and then I have my marketing team. That's about it. But so in let's, the kitchen... talk about, let's talk about that. Let's talk about what, what you offer and, and what it is that you do. Sure. So every week I offer my meal delivery. So I, I make five different recipes and one dessert and you can choose to have five or 10. Um, and I deliver on Sundays. So I close my orders every Friday. And if you want your meals delivered, they come on Sunday. I have a driver. She's amazing. And she delivers it to your door. I buy as organic as I can find. Everything is plant-based. Everything is made from scratch. I make all the dressings, all the sauces. I soak and sprout all of the nuts and seeds. Um, and I cook a little bit, very little. Mostly is raw. So maybe I'll roast some veggies or bake something or make some quinoa but that's the extent of it it's really high raw and it's grab and go so everything comes in a container it's ready to eat and i like doing that because i realized when i was teaching regularly people would come to my classes and say i want to eat like this but i don't have the time or the desire to make it and i think it's okay because i believe that we should all be focusing on the things that we are good at Right. I was just on a three hour call with my CPA and I'm like, this gives me a headache. I hate it. And that's why I have you. So it's the same way with food. I think it's important to know how to make yourself some food in order to take care of yourself. But if you don't love it, why not delegate it and give yourself time and space to do the things that you are good at? So that's the intention behind my meal prep. And, and then I also teach classes so I can come to your house. I can bring the, the equipment. Um, we talk about what you want to learn and I curate the class for you. I also have done like group classes. I really like that. We can do a three course meal where we all like curate the meal together. I've done that for some friends that wanted to gather. So they wanted to learn about our foods and then they wanted to have a meal. So we go to the kitchen all together. We make the food. I leave and they sit down, have their wine and enjoy their meal. So I really, really love teaching because I see that people don't have the knowledge and I just love to see their faces when they're so in awe of what can be created using such simple ingredients. And, um, Yes, if you go on my um, if you go on my Instagram, which is Rush of Carla, I have a tab, one of the highlights that says meal prep, and or, or weekly menu, and I always change the menu every week, so you can see uh, all of the details there. So you can see how much it costs, and you can see what the menu is for that week. Um, and also you can go on the link in my profile, and then on my link tree you will see. Uh, healing meals and it will direct you directly to my website and you can go ahead and also check that out um, that gives you more of the pricing I also make desserts I love making desserts so right now you can find my raw Twix bars at Love Life Cafe the Plantisserie and Natura and in Natura I also have um, chocolate mousse and um, these raspberry fudge dipped in chocolate they're so good and, but I, on my website, I also have some cakes and things like that, which is my, I, I love it. It's just so much fun to create. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm, I'm glad I had lunch before the ceiling talk, because if not, I would have just been like salivating right now. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah, they sound amazing. And I think I might have had some. Yeah, they're great. I remember. I, I know when I taste something good, because I have a sweet tooth and, and they're awesome. So thank, thank you expanding and for for growing and for creating these delicious treats for all of us thank you thank you for having me one of the things that i really love that you do is you you take people through a detox program because i feel mm -hmm. like before we can really start to integrate these different meals and these this different diet into our life it would be nice to have a detox and just get rid of all the stuff that we have in our system so we can start fresh 
how long are the detoxes? Do you do you do them once every quarter, or is it just as as people come and ask you about them? Do you do them in groups? How does that work? So I used to do a 21 day detox every quarter, and I did it last year in 2020. And yeah, so this year they're they're a lot of work, and they're very taxing on me. And like I said, I really I believe that I should be working from my highest potential and when things are draining me i don't think it works so i decided to really slow down on the 21 day transformations even though they are beautiful and i loved seeing everybody uh really shifting i am trying to schedule i'm working with the, the with a friend who does the same thing and we do them together we're going to schedule a seven day and it's going to be a group thing and you can either do it online by yourself, get the PDFs and cook the food yourself. So everything is broken down by day and by week. You get your your grocery list and then you get every day what you need to be doing if you wanna do it day by day. So like today you need to soak the cashews for tomorrow. You need to make this to dehydrate. Um, we usually do simple recipes as well so that people get the benefit from it. And then we go live every day because we believe that the educational component really needs to be hand in hand. It's not only about food. It's about how you relate to food, how you understand the, what you're eating. And it, that really keeps you motivated to keep going because it does get difficult and we know that. So that's why we also reduce the amount of time to seven days because it's also a smaller commitment and it's not as scary for people. And then we also offer the option of you getting the food delivered to you if you don't wanna make it yourself. I can do it and then just send it out to your house and you just eat it and go through the detox. You're awesome, Carla. Uh, <laughs> Thank I you. Lo I love to be, you know, I was talking to Jackson, uh, Jackson Strong. Do you know Jackson? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Awesome friend of mine. And we didn't, it wasn't until recently that we started to really get to know each other. And because of the fact that we worked so closely together for this men's retreat, I got to hang out more with him and I was, I was congratulating him for having the vision of doing this retreat, for executing, mm -hmm. all but also I was saying thank you for being the answer to my prayer because I, for, for a long time, I've been praying to have friends that influence me and friends that, that leave a lasting impact, that inspire me to do better. And every time I see you and what you're up to and every time mm -hmm. we talk, you inspire me to be better. Every time I leave a conversation with you, I get off the phone, I'm like, all right, Louis, let's go, man. Like, <laughs> How are you going to change the world? You know, like, so I'm so grateful that you said yes to this talk. You're inspiring so many people here. Thank you for answering the questions that everyone asked and, and for just being such an inspiration in the community. And friend, I can't say enough uh, good things about you. I appreciate Thank you. Thank you so much. This means a lot because I feel the same way about this, this community. You, what you do, and everybody that is in this community. I have, I feel finally that I found home and it took a long time. And I'm so grateful to have people that understand me and that understand what I'm doing because it, it makes such a huge difference. And to really be inspired by people around you that are doing amazing things for themselves, for their health, for the world, for others to just keep on growing and evolving and just being better humans. Oh, uh -huh. so <laughs> uh, last thing is how can we get in contact with you if we wanted to reach out to you and, and get a hold of you and, and learn more? Raw Chef Carla. That's uh, my Instagram. That's my website. And oh, thank you. But yeah, Raw Chef Carla. That's where you can find all of me. <laughs> I'm usually hanging out on Instagram, and I, I'm the one answering all of the questions. So you can message me, and I'll reply to that, and then I'll shoot you to the I'll direct you where to go if you're looking for for services. <laughs> And we have one minute left. I'm just going to give anyone the opportunity, anyone that wants to ask any questions, any last minute comments for Carla before we finally sign off. And by the way, thank you uh, for that compliment, GC Vibes. Yeah, it's so magical. Thank yeah. you for letting us know. Here's one thing I want to say is that Michelle Alva and I, we're going to be doing a, another Tantra Thai release retreat we we're going to do it in April, but it's a little bit too close for uh, right now. I'm doing a retreat in April in California, April 7th through the 10th. And uh, so that's going to just 
we have to wait. We're going to push it further along in the, in the year. And we're going to have Carla as our chef for that retreat. So if you want to meet Carla in person and try out her delicious food, come to the Tantra Thai release retreat. The date is still TBD. It's going to be, but we know for sure that you're going to be our chef there. So yeah, we'll with you in that event. I'm so excited too. Thank you so much for choosing me. I feel so honored. <laughs> it is now 401 and uh, I want to respect Carla's time. I want to respect everyone's time. Thank you everyone who joined us. We love you all. I'm going to be tagging you when I post this on my, my main wall. The entire interview is going to go on my YouTube channel, but I'm going to take a little snippet of today's talk. And I'm going to be posting that on my main page on Instagram. And I'm going to be tagging you so people can reach out to you directly through there. Amazing. Thank you so much, Louis. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take care, guys. Peace. Bye.